Ladies and gentlemen, he's back at it again. What's going on guys, Tyler here, and welcome to a video about this man. Wow! <laughs> the idiotic, stupid, incompetent, and frankly, mentally unstable Belgian millionaire that owns Charlton Athletic Football Club. So before we get into roasting De Chatelet, I thought I would give a little bit of contextual background so some of you that aren't Charlton fans can understand what's going on. So in December 2017, Roland put Charlton up for sale. And we've literally learned nothing on the matter whatsoever. We've literally, it's just the same old BS every single time. Ugh. And Roland's just not helping the matter at all because he's just sitting there and his solution to it is just sitting there and run away to Jim White to talk about it on TalkSport. And recently, on the 27th of February 2019, he had a radio interview with Jim White. And the comments, it's just laughable. <laughs> Let me just summarize some of the facts, some of the points that he said on TalkSport. He claims, Roland claims, that fan backlash is the reason why foreigners should not get involved in English football. He also claims that the idea of foreigners get involved in football in general is wrong. And that the EFL should not invite people like him to come and own a football club in England when they don't know the consequences of owning a football club. It's ridiculous, frankly. I mean, the f first of all, fan backlash is the reason why foreigners should not get involved in English football. I mean, that's just wrong, isn't it? There are so many foreign people that own English clubs in England. Some of them are like multi-billionaires from doing it and very successful. Roman Abramovich, the Man City owners, Arsenal's owners, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, they're largely successful with it. Unfortunately, Roland's not an example of it. It's just ridiculous. Plus, it also makes it seem that we only do it to foreign football club owners, which, of course, is incorrect as well. I mean... The Oyston family from Blackpool, Ellis Short from Sunderland, they all protested and they managed to get him out. Yeah, I know, Blackpool got a faster owner than we did. That just proves how incompetent Roland is, and he? he can't even sell a club, let alone run it. But it's just like, it's just ridiculous. Foreigners shouldn't get involved in football in general. Again, incorrect. I mean, come on. Come on. And that he should not be invited invited to run a football club. He's basically saying now that he didn't have a choice in buying the club. He's making it seem like the EFL, Cholton was so desperate for an owner that they, they, they just went, Roland, come down and buy us, please. Because that weren't the case. We didn't invite Roland. I bet Roland's mentality was just like, oh, Cholton for sale. Bosh, I now own a football club in London. Billions come in my way. <laughs> the bloke has seriously just lost the plot. He just has. And to top it all off, on TalkSport, he claims that it is the press team's fault, Cholton's press team, for not handling the situation well in terms of the takeover. Which, again, is just idiocy. How is it the press team's fault? So the press team is supposed to, like, I don't know, speak on your behalf, which is actually relevant, because it's an, art it's re it's an article that is the article that I'm going to be referring to later. But seriously, it's just ridiculous. It's not Ollie Groom's fault. It's not Jamie Boxall's fault. It's not like it's got nothing to do with the press team. Richard Murray even said himself, he even apologised for not letting the fans know. So basically, Roland is contradicting himself. Him and Richard Murray literally said nothing on the matter, and now they're blaming the pre press team to cover up their lies. It's ridiculous. They literally told us nothing from February to June, and they're still not telling us anything now because the fans' forum is just going really well right, right now, isn't it? Just accept responsibility for once. Stop blaming other people that literally have been forced to write things that are coming out of your stupid, deluded mind. It's not their fault, and I feel sorry for the press team to have to write this thing, to write, have to write articles like this, which is what I'm going to be referring to now. As on the 28th of February 2019, an article was posted on Charlton Athletics, football, Charlton Athletics website. I'll leave a link to both the articles in the description, by the way. The, uh, the TalkSport one and the one to Charlton, if you feel like cringing at our, at our football owner. And then show sympathy to Charlton fans if you want. So the article starts off, starts off with, The first seasons under De Chatelet, Charlton finished 18th and 12th in the Championship. Which is an improvement, of course. This was the uh, the first couple of years that Roland owned us, which is in 2012, 20, 2013, 14, and 20, 
2013-14 uh, and 2014-15. After two years of ownership without problems, Cholton got too many injuries relative to its limited squad size. Results were poor. Fans started to criticise and then protest, sometimes during the games, which didn't help. Cholton got relegated from League One. Cholton got too many injuries to its relative squad size. Agree agreed. And relegated from League One. Agreed. Results were poor. Agreed. Fans started to criticise and then protest, sometimes during the games, which didn't help. I don't agree with. I mean, come on. If anything, the protests made Cholton perform better. Let's be real. Middlesbrough beat them. Birmingham beat them. Chesterfield, the season after that in League One, beat them. The team performs better under pressure. Let's be real. But I mean, I mean, come on. The press team, let's, let's be real. The press team would never write that. That's come out of Roland's mouth. 150%. It's just ridiculous. I mean, come on. How can the protests not help the situation? Seriously. How? How can the protest be that bad that it affects team performance? As I mentioned, if anything, it made the team perform better. It's just ridiculous. The stupidity just rolls on further along the article, so here's um, the next paragraph. As a result of the damaging and sometimes criminal fan protests and the charged financial climate of the PNS um, S rules, the part before that is a reference to the fact that I'm not I'm not too sure if you guys were aware of this. You probably are, but um. Some private property of Roland in St. Troyd and Belgium were vandalised. Um, graffiti, um, in particular, one on the window saying F off Roland. Now, I don't condone vandalism, but I can neither confirm or deny that it was a Charlton fan. Of course, I don't condone vandalism. You shouldn't do it. But it's actually at the fans forum meeting recently, um, the representatives of the fans and even the club, I think, said that it's highly impossible that a Charlton fan vandalised Roland's... Um, Roland's property. I don't agree with it, obviously, but that is a bit too far. But I don't know. I can't really, I can't really judge to be honest because there's not enough evidence. Um, Charlton were put officially put up for sale at the end of 2017. A few months later, heads of terms were in place with two candidate buyers, pending the funding of the transaction. Yeah, so we were put up for sale in December 2017. It's now February 2019, a year and two months later, and we don't have an owner. The two candidates in 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 the takeover, as well, as well, by the way. Remember Andrew Murr, the head of the Australian consortium? Yep, he's not part of the party anymore. The Australians are now backed by American funding. The Aussies don't have enough money to buy the football club. And the second consortium, which is reportedly British, is now leading the race. As apparently, they passed the fit and ready test and they're just, get lit, they're just weighing up the money ready to buy the club. So they're very close. It looks like they're imminent. But is it going to happen? No. No, of course it's not. It's not going to happen, is it? Plus, like, the way that it's being dealt with, like, by the club, which is another prime example of Roland's stupidity, that it's not the press's fault. His representative, Levien de Turk, or LDT for short, speaks with the two parties. The Australians, he speaks for them once every two days, which is actually very good. But the Aussies aren't the leading consortium in the race anymore. It's the British. And he speaks with the British consortium once every two to three weeks. He said that they're weighing up the money, ready to buy the club, and he's speaking to them once a fortnight. What are you doing? They're on the verge of buying the football club, and you're only in communication with them once every 14 days. The Aussies, who clearly don't have the money to buy us, you speak into regularly. What are you doing? Spend more time with consortiums that are ready to buy us. The takeover situation is just ridiculous anyway, because they say there's two consortium parties, and then the next day there's five, then there's six, then there's two, then there's one again, then there's three, then four, then five, then six, then two, then one, then three, then six, then five, then four. Fucking <laughs> However, new incidents were created by a coalition of fans against the owner based on fake news, like young players were not getting water to drink and staff not being paid due bonuses. Yeah, alright then. Yeah, alright, yeah, of course it was fake news, yeah, sure. Alright then. It's hard to deny that such actions could jeopardise the ongoing pro purchase process. The EFL said it, it would intervene to find out who was telling the truth, but nothing like that happened. They didn't really investigate things. Um, okay, that is correct. That is correct. I do, I do. That is the one thing I can say. The EFL said they were going to intervene in the situation and they practically did nothing. They literally went to the club, they met with Roland and just said, and literally just told the fans exactly what we already know. That, the, that some consortiums are close. Also, by the way, to spin this back on Roland, he said that he, refu he refused to go to the first EFL meeting, which is why it was postponed until he eventually decided to go. I mean, 
I agree with the fact that the EFL did nothing about the situation, but Roland didn't want to go in the first place. So, like, again, just... The whole situation, even with the EFL, even the EFL don't want to do anything. Like, they just don't want to intervene with poor ownerships at all. It's just, it's just ridiculous. The closing statement just sums up Roland's ownership of the club, and it's just ridiculous. So let me just read it out to you. Football has been the fastest growing industry in England in recent decades. Well done. However, which foreign candidate's owner will be prepared to invest millions to get a chance to bring a club to the Premier League and at the same time accept acts of vandalism against his property and intuition in his private life wherever in the world he slash she lives? Therefore, the owner demands that the EFL acquires the football club. I'm going to repeat that, actually. Therefore, the owner demands that the EFL acquires his football club. So I'm going to repeat that one more time. The owner demands that the EFL acquire the football club. <laughs> <laughs> can't be asked anymore. I actually can't be asked. The geezers lost the plot. The EFL can't buy or run football clubs. Besides, if they did, it would be ridiculous unfair, ridiculously unfair on the other 91 English clubs in the football league. How can they run a football club? You utter... Utter idiot. What are you doing? Every single fan has literally just gone, no, nope, no, nope, EFL's not running us. It's just ridiculous. How can the EFL run the football club? Seriously. Oh my God, I can't be bothered to deal with this bloke. He said on TalkSport as well that he was willing to sell the footballing side of the club for free. Initially, one pound, one pound for the footballing side of the club and 20 million for the land, i.e. the stadium and the training ground, which again is, is ridiculous. How can, we, how can the footballing side of the club be worth one bloody quid? Now he doesn't even want to sell it for a penny. Like, oh. I need to end this video, guys, because seriously, it's just ridiculous. I mean... The ownership situation, the fans forum meetings. The fans forum is another thing. It meets up once every three months and literally nothing has just been cleared up. It's just ridiculous. So, Roland, it's not the press team's fault for everything. It's yours. Okay? It is Roland's fault entirely for not dealing with the situation directly, refusing to speak with the EFL. I mean, the EFL are just as incompetent as Roland are because they just don't want to speak about it. But, like... I just didn't investigate it very well at all, to be honest with you. But it's it's just the whole situation is just ridiculous. Roland claims that the whole situation is unhealthy, and again he's digging the press team about it. The the situation is unhealthy because of you, because of him and the five years that he's owned the football club. It's just ridiculous, guys. I need to end this video, so let me just let me just address something, guy. Address something. Let me know what you think about Roland de Chatelet. Is he a complete idiot, a complete utter spaz who deserves to go to a mental institution because he's just frankly lost the plot? I do apologise, guys, that this video wasn't exactly light-hearted, but I felt that it was a video that I needed to express my opinion on because frankly, it's a serious matter um, regarding the football club because our club off the field is a mess. This has been Tyler Runnington. Have a nice day, and I will see you all at my next match day vlog against Portsmouth. Goodbye, guys.